Uh, started the video a little late, but here's what's going on. The cylinder here is leaking. So um, when I go to compress and split a log, the pressure here starts spraying out my hydraulic fluid all over the place. So the idea today is to take the shaft apart and replace all the seals that are in there. I got them in the mail today and it looks like it came with an entire kit. So we're gonna be replacing all of these and it shows that um, this is pretty common for this splitter. I got it from Ford's Parts Plus and I was able to order it all online and um, all those seals came in. So what I've done so far was I have taken off the hydraulic hose from the hydraulic uh, filter and basically taken the hose and let the pressure run back into the tank in the reservoir. So um, now the idea is to open and close the actual arm so that it releases all that pressure back into the line down into the reservoir and next we'll take the wedge off. I'm still opening the actual cylinder here. I'm getting it out. Um, I'm gonna try to do it a little easier than pulling it by hand because it is still got a lot of pressure in it. I just took the toe strap inside the holes here. Um, you can also do it around here. Just want to be careful if you do that so it doesn't slip and hit you. Um, then while you're cranking, you do want to release pressure here so that it keeps pulling uh, just slightly as you're cranking and it's pulling um, it open. And it was actually pushing quite a bit through the hose into the reservoir while I was doing that. Now that I've got it all the way out, um, I've gone ahead and opened both valves. This one and the retract and I could even hear it going down into the reservoir. Uh, what I'm going to do next is attempt to take off the wedge. I'm just going to be a bolt here and remove that and then slide it back and off by lifting the cylinder and um, taking this little Phillips screw out. All right, so I've got the bolt out now. It uh, was a three-fourths um, bolt. I used a socket wrench and a crescent wrench and just pulled it out. It is pretty heavy, so when you're pulling out the bolt, be sure you're lifting on the actual cylinder so you're not stripping out your bolt and be able to reuse it. Since it's so heavy, I actually took a couple little bit scrap pieces of wood, two by fours, lifted it up and held it up into place so that I was able to get the wedge out. So you slide the wedge all the way back and it'll come off and then uh, you can place it on the floor until you need it or somewhere where you don't uh, lose it. Next I went ahead and removed the Phillips screw that was right there. And you can actually see the seal is very compromised. It was spraying hydraulic fluid everywhere. Um, and that's what we're doing today is we're replacing that. Um, so next I'm gonna get this plate kind of pushed back. There should be a wire that goes around and holds this plate in. Once I get that wire out, that plate should just come right off. I've got the plate now pushed back see the wire like right there that holds that plate in so the idea is to get that wire out what I did to push the plate back was <clears throat> I used a dowel rod and I placed the dowel rod on the plate itself and actually hammered the dowel rod very gently from both sides until that plate was able to push back and I was careful not to scratch um, the actual cylinder, so just be careful on that. It might cover it or something like that. But I used the dowel rod, pushed it back with a little hammer um, tapping, and it 
um, review of my wire, and I'm going to get the wire out. To save yourself some time, push back the plate on this about two inches, maybe an inch and a half. And then I used a flat head and I found the corner of the wire and just pried it up. There's a little groove that it sets in right here. You can kind of see it, but that groove um, is sharper coming out and it slopes going in. So push the wire in and around. And when you do, once you get to the top, that bottom end, you can practically just pull out by, uh, by your hand. Uh, that'll save you a lot of time and finessing with it. Uh, just push that back a couple inches and then start by pushing in and that other side will come out towards you. This actually still has a lot of hydraulic fluid inside. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing it in and pulling it back out. It was at, at hard, it was hard at first and um, I stuck a little trailer pin through here to help me get a grip. And I'm still pushing it in. And you can hear and see that it's contracting. Now, and it's actually pushing all that hydraulic fluid back in the reservoir. Get the idea. What you want to do is get that pressure out so that it comes out a little easier. It's got a lot of suction. This thing's about 10 years old. Uh, so just keep doing that, getting it loose. And then I'll show you how I do the actual hard pull at the end and get it out all the way. When you're pushing this in and out as well, you wanna be sure you have this valve open. Otherwise it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, it allows that air to get in and the hydraulic fluid to escape into your reservoir. So now I'm gonna get that cylinder out. At least that's the plan. I put the original bolt back in. What I'm gonna do is pull it with a ratchet, we strapped it to an I-beam in our building and in the shop, and I put some chalks, which are fours, um, to hold the wheels still, and um, we'll see how it goes. So that did it. I just kept ratcheting and ratcheting <laughs> and ratcheting, and then once I could tell it was really tight, I just kind of lifted and dropped and lifted and dropped and lifted and dropped until... <coughs> And it came out, and there we are. And I have access to all the seals, and we go ahead, go clean this up a little bit, and switch out the seals. I got this cleaned up. Went ahead and took the front one off, took the bolt out so I could slip off the other piece. Right over here, and kind of wiped it down, but you can see the seal that was compromised and allowing hydraulic fluid to spray out when it was being used. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pull that out and pull the new ones over here and see what we got to deal with. What I did was um, I pulled out their packaging and I did a one for one. So these two here, it's a flat peat, flat seal, and both of them really look flat, honestly. Um, but you've got one that's larger, feels like plastic, and then the smaller one that's rubber. Um, and that's what these two are. So they're gonna go on this one. Uh, I'm gonna set this here. And then with this, I've got two blues. So both those blues are going in here. Uh, the one with the black seal appears to go here. Pull it out a little bit. It's got a little black seal inside it. So that's the one I'm gonna use at the front. Inside is another blue seal. So that's where that other one's gonna go. And then there's a flat black one. That's where this one's gonna go. And on the outside, I've got two black, one flat and one round. And I have those here, flat and round. And I'm just matching it one for one, everything that came with. I'm going in and just um, filling in those spots with the new ones that I received. Here's the front. And it had that little Phillips head in it. And that's where the seals were. So the outer one is going to take the blue without the black seal in it. The middle one is actually what's going to take the one, the blue seal with the black uh, seal in it. 
and then you've got that flat black one near two outside seals. One's flat, one's round. And that was the middle blue seal with the black lining in it. Um, I'm still actually cleaning some of it out. And this is the outer seal. Um, that was what was left in the black middle blue seal that used to be here. <laughs> um, after cleaning that out, I'll put the new ones in. Place two seals aside and I felt like I had an extra one um, then when I went to swap these out I've already done this one this rubber round one goes beneath the top one so it'll go on first and fill the hole and then uh, this will go over top the flatter one will go over top in that gap got all the seal new seals put back in and I remember the middle was corroded I had to get all the debris out of that got the front one and then the rear flat one the outer two I'm going to reassemble and we'll check and make sure there's no more leaks so now that I have the cylinder back in with all the new seals I'm putting back on the hydraulic hose back to the filter and I couldn't quite get it pushed back in all the way. Uh, so what I'm gonna probably do is turn it on and see if it'll just come, like if I can open it and uh, get that receiver back in. And then I can put that little ring wire back in place. So that did it, I turned it on and um, retracted that arm. And once I shut it off, I went ahead and tapped it in with that dowel rod and hammer again and you can see now it's in enough I could get into that groove and put my wire ring back. Now the ring is back in place um, in the groove where it's supposed to be. I might turn it back on again, push this um, plate back out and put our little Phillips uh, screw back in its little hole there. That did it. I turned it on and pushed it out. And that whole plate came back up right up to the ring where it was before. And uh, now I'm going to put the screw back in. And there we go. I lifted the arm back up, got the screw in, and I just slid the wedge back in underneath it. And um, I held up the cylinder here to where I could put the bolt through very easily. And again, I used my 3 4 socket wrench, crescent wrench and put that on secure and we're ready to roll again i'm going to top this off with some more hydraulic fluid because i made a mess and the seals were spraying out for a little bit while i was finishing up a job and so i'm going to top off the reservoir and that's pretty much it for replacing those seals so that's it for the husky 22 ton log splitter and i just replaced the seals and um, put the hose back on, put the wedge back on, put that screw back in, and we are uh, ready to roll. I'm gonna start it and let's make sure there's no, no leak. it for the video um, there are no leaks as it would replace that blue seal and all the seals around it and nothing spraying nothing coming out so that's a good sign and we're ready to go uh, there you go thank you for watching uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe um, if this video was helpful at all thank you very much